I'm Jason Morgan. We don't have a good mic, so we're going to talk loud. Uh, this is my good friend, Andrew Stosberg. He's an expert handicapper, and he's going to be my uh, wise guy here. Expert is in quotes. <laughs> uh, while he's getting that up there, um, just a couple of storylines for this year. The last four years have been anything but normal with the uh, with the Derby. Uh, you go back to 2019, we had maximum security uh, almost crack the entire field. Following year, we had a pandemic. I'll come to you in just a second. Um, following, following year, we had a pandemic and a derby in September 2021. We had a bachelor winner that was disqualified several months later. And then last year, we had the fastest pace we've probably ever seen and had Rich Strike win at the second, second longest odds ever. So hoping this year will be a little bit normal. A um, couple things, watching on TV, if you go out there, Churchill got a lot of construction going on. There's a temporary paddock. There's a brand new first turn facility. You'll probably see a lot on TV. Um, Storyline about Baffert is he's still not here. He's still under suspension, but trainers, uh, Todd Fletcher, Brad Cox are very prominent. They actually have seven combined horses in the field, one third of the total. We've got Japanese horses that are getting buzzed. So a lot of unique things going on this year that kind of make it an interesting derby. Right now, they're passing out some sheets for a little contest of uh, Mark is spearheading for us. It's $10 entry fee. I'm going to let him stand up and tell you just a little bit about it real fast. Hey, everyone, good morning. Nice. I'm going to explain how this works. A lot of you can All right, so the way this works, this is the official entry form, okay? And all you have to do is write your name right here and give me ten dollars at the end of this meeting. You'll put your three picks in no particular order here. One, two, three. The way this works is uh, the actual finish. You're going to get basically a virtual two dollar across the board bet on each of your entries. In fact, and we'll add up the payouts, and the person with the highest payout will be the winner of the contest. You understand how that works? Seventy percent the first. 20%, second, third. So here's the example. If you pick the number eight horse, or say the number 10 horse, and he finished second, and your $2 wager paid $12.40 to place and six eighty, dollars you add all that up, and that's, that's your winning total. So that's how we'll determine the winner. Okay. Got it? Any questions? Do we, do we pick the number or the name? Uh, go with the numbers. Post position number. Hey, Mike Simpson better explain this. You can write the name. <laughs> oh. Wow. So let me shut on it. See what happens. All right, well, let's get started. We're going to go through the field. And luckily this year, they, they've got the draw. In the past few years, I've been doing a draw like we were in during this lunch and looking at our phone trying to figure out who's got what. So, we have that today. What you're seeing here is the actual um, post position draw. Number one is Hit Show. Uh, this is a horse that had a lot of promise uh, racing in the New York circuit. Had a great weight race at the Withers, was the big favorite in the Wood Memorial. And Made a decent move, but he got sandwiched between a couple of horses and he got beat by a 59 to one shot, Lord Miles. So I kind of liked his show just a little bit as a long shot, but being in the one show, I'm probably one hole, I'm probably going to downgrade him because of post. Let's see what Andrew says. Well, this is Jason mentioned this is one of Brad Cox's probably three horses he, he has, or see three or four. He's four. Fletcher has three. Thank you. So one of Cox's four horses. Uh, notably, he's drawn next to a stable mate with the two to verify. And it, um, the, the one, as Jason mentions, traditionally not a good place to be. However, I think it was last year they refined the starting gate so it's not quite as jammed up on, on the rail barrier. Um, I also think um, the hit show is not going to blaze out too quickly. I think he can tuck in behind the number two verifying. So my point to all that is this could be the type of horse that just sort of lope, lopes around the inside rail and then 
real late, passes tiring horses and maybe has some gas in the tank and can get up for third or fourth place at a front. So I'll be using them maybe for a show event, but if you play a superfecta or a trifecta bend, um, I think he's worth including at the bottom. He does have a good pedigree, and then this is the second start off a long layoff if you like that angle. So moving on to the next horse. Uh, this is another Brad Cox horse. This is verifying ridden by uh, local top jockey Tyler Gaffleon, who's a personal favorite of mine. He basically had the bluegrass one until Tappet Trice came roaring from behind and nipped him. He is going to be one of the three or four horses that are in the first flight. So you will you will hear his name, at least you should, according to pace uh, projections. You'll hear his name quite a bit throughout the race because he'll be uh, on or near the front end. Um, I like him a little bit. I do not think he's a win candidate. I think he's reached the end of his pedigree. Um, and he, actually, his only wins are in a maiden race and an optional claiming race. So I, I question his overall class. I, I concur with Jason. I, I think unless this race has such a slow pace and there's not a lot of front end speed, then I suppose verifying could just circle the track and um, at an easy pace. But um, short of that scenario, Kind of the opposite of what happened last year where there were a bunch of jackrabbits. Um, I, I don't see Verify as a, a hit the board contender uh, this year. All right, number three is two fills. Uh, this is from some Chicago connections. Larry Rivelli is the trainer. He's a very inexperienced in terms of derby jockey on him. A very interesting horse and probably the horse in the field that I, I really don't know what to do with. Um, he has the fastest Fire speed figure and Brisnet speed figure, which is what this past performance is, is Brisnet um, in the in their last race. There's an asterisk there because that last race was at Turfway on synthetic. Uh, so I sort of put a, a squiggly line through that personally, and I want to look at what's he what has he done on a dirt track. And quite frankly, his numbers on the dirt are mid tier at best. Um, I'm not backing him. I know there's other people out there. He looks good on the track. Uh, other people that like him, but um, he's not one of my favorites. What about the jockey? His name's Jared L Loveberry. I don't, I don't know if he's ever ridden in the Derby or not. The journeyman, <laughs> as they would say. Uh, so the, he he is definitely the the proverbial wild card horse. He has. Jason talked about speed figures. There's a type of speed figure called the, the Ragazin sheets or the thoroughbred. He also has the fastest speed figure from those two uh, service publications. Um, he, he has a lot of foundation. And in an interview with the Gaki Loveberry early on, you'll see at the bottom, he, he, he ran sprints. You see a five furlong at the bottom, six furlong, six furlong. And the, they figured out that Loveberry insisted, it's like, this horse wants to go longer. Wants the distance and his recent races, his last four races reflect that he likes the, the distance. So um, I think you need to include this horse as part of your super effective ticket if you play it. I'm not sure he's a win candidate. I won't be. I won't be stunned if he wins, but include him on the bottom. I will. <laughs> All right. Well, you want to scroll up a little bit? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, keep going until you get that confidence game. Screen confidence game number four. Uh, this is from the um, interesting ownership group of Don't Tell My Wife Stables. Uh, this source has a very interesting past performance line. You you'll notice if you can see up there. His last race was in February. It was a good race. He he won the Rebel down at Oakland in Arkansas. Um, but no one has won the Derby off such a long eight plus week uh, layoff go, going back many, many decades and decades. Um, he's also he never run at a mile and an eighth, which is what your typical stepping stone prep is going into the Derby. He's also had gaps in his training. The positives are, I think he's gonna be very prominent in the pace. I don't think there's a lot of speed horses that want the lead. I think he will have the lead when they go around the clubhouse turn. How long he can ha uh, hang on is debatable, but he does um, have some good uh, distance uh, pedigree. 
uh, Drake's Bernardini is his uh, is his damn sire. So this one's a, a wild card to me. Uh, like two fills, but I like him a little bit better than two fills. Uh, just in case um, this layoff has served him well and he comes in fresh and can lead him a long way. Yeah, I, I'm my assessment of no confidence game is just, is just that. Um, I know his last win at the end of February came over a sloppy track in the record. I view that as a fluke. You go two races back, he was uh, beaten by two fills. Um, and just the long layoff and the gaps in training um, give me no confidence in this horse. He will not be on the fence. All right, the next horse is the number five, Tap It Trice. This is your second favorite. This is um, the first of three Todd Fletcher horses in the race. He's a very impressive winner of the Bluegrass Stakes at Keeneland, uh, ridden by one of the probably three best jockeys in the U.S. right now, Louis Saez. Uh, he's undefeated this year at three. I would, from a, from a negative standpoint, I, I would say his competition up until the bluegrass was pretty weak um, down at Tampa Bay. Um, and the other is more of a stylistic weakness. He, he usually drops back in his races. You know, everybody loves the closer. Um, that's great in an eight or nine horse field, but in a 20 horse field, he's going to have a lot of work to do. You would probably have to take the overland route and circle wide. When you do, when you go wide in the Derby, instead of being four or five wide, you can be seven or eight wide, which which <laughs> it's like running a, a, in a track meet. And if you're in late eight, you're going to run a lot further around the turn. So I uh, I love the horse from a speed perspective. Uh, you'll see at the very end of this, he's actually my top pick, but it's um, it's actually between he and another horse that I'm, I'm teetering on. Um, He's just going to have to navigate traffic. So I, I mean, look, I the the bluegrass was a thrilling race for those of you who watched. It was a great stretch duel between him and Verifying. I've followed Verifying, and, and I'm not a fan of that horse. And it took every ounce of muster, tap it twice to um, to to put the <laughs> away. Um, He's a good horse. He belongs, but I, I don't have him as a win candidate on my ticket. All right, the next horse there is number six, Kings Barnes. Kings Barnes is the Louisiana Derby winner. It's another Todd Fletcher, another good pedigree horse. Uncle Mo out of a Tappet uh, mare. Uh, Tappet is known as a distant sire, and you'll you'll see his name as a sire or a damn sire, uh, damn sire through quite a bit of these runners. He is undefeated, um, but he's got the Apollo curse. That is, he did not race at age two. There's only been one horse since, 19, I'm sorry, since 1882 to win the Derby without two starts, or without starts at two, and that is Justify. Um, I don't think that he's Justify. Justify had huge numbers coming in. Everybody knew he was going to be great. This one, um, you're going to take a flyer on. Um, because he's only shown that he's going to win on the front. And his fractions, meaning the early part of the race in the Louisiana Derby, were pretty slow. And there's other horses that are going to get the lead. And so you take a lightly horse, a lightly raced horse, and he's going to face a lot of things he's never faced. And most importantly is he's going to be facing hind ends for the first time early in the race, and we don't know if he can pass a horse. We don't know if he can handle traffic, and it's probably too much to ask um, at this stage in his career. Going to be a good horse, um, but probably not a win or a place candidate for me. He could get out there and hang on, um, but... Why do you think he has such good odds? Um, he's, he's never lost a race. He's, he's undefeated, you know, 12 to 1. That's that's value if you like him. I wouldn't argue with you if, if you wanted to take a stand and say, I think he can get the lead and, and lead him a long way. I just think there's a few others that are faster out of the gate. He's going to experience things that he, he's not before. Yeah, I'll just add, I'm not a fan of his competition. You know, he beat Disarm and JC's Road. We haven't talked about JC's Road yet, but I'm, I'm not a fan of those horses to hit the win board. Um, You'll notice a lot of uh, jockey merry-go-rounds as well. And it's, 
four four races. It's going to have four different jockeys. Uh, two two of the really good ones, Saez, who Jason just uh, correctly complimented, and then Flavio Pratt, who will talk later, uh, both opted for other horses. And to me, that's telling as well. Yep. All right. The next horse is Reincarnate. Uh, this was, I think, the one horse in the field that used to be with Baffert. And the trend line with, uh, because he, he had horses early in the season, like January and February, that were aimed for the Derby. But because he suspended, he had to give those horses to other trainers. I think this is the only horse that he sort of dispersed that made the Derby. He had a lot of promise going into the, the Rebel and the Arkansas Derby. Um, he's he's 100% of the money, but I think it's against suspect competition. Um, and to me, every time he gets in position to do something, he just kind of sits there. He hangs, as they call it. Um, I mean, he's got Johnny V on him, who's, a, who's I think, won four derbies, if you include the, the Dina Spirit one. Um, so probably the best, most proven derby jockey in the field. It would, I mean, it, he could get fourth, but he's more likely to finish in the very middle of the pack. Uh, I, just for the record, I do not include Medicaid and Spirit as one of Johnny D's uh, four wins. So I'll keep him I sent you. He's still still a great jockey. Uh, but uh, notwithstanding Johnny B's presence, Johnny B usually likes to ride his horses up front to get them forwardly placed, so that there will be a tactical advantage. However, I think there's enough speed this year up front where a horse like Reincarnate. Um, won't quote steal the race as a result of slow fractions. And um, unless that scenario happens, I don't see it reincarnate um, it as a win candidate or probably not hitting the board. All right. Number eight is Mage, another lightly raced horse uh, like King's Barn did not race in age two. So that's a big strike against him. A couple of really good things I do like about this. If you are a horse geek and you watch uh, replays of races. I encourage you to go back and watch the Florida Derby. He made what I consider to be the best move of any horse in the Derby prep season on the turn of the Florida Derby. He was in last place. He flew by the entire field and was almost home free until the horse named Forte, the favorite, who's the classiest horse in the field, ran him down late. I think he has a huge Huge license to improve. He's 15 to 1 on morning line. He has my personal all time favorite jockey, Javier Castellano. I'm going to bet this horse. I think he's a great horse to play across the board as a, as a longer shot. Um, pedigree is a little unproven, but he gave Forte all he wants. And if, if Forte is going to be 3 to 1, I mean, he lost by a length. And he's going to, you're going to get 15, 20 to one, I think, on Saturday. Yeah. So Jason and I are actually in a horse geek uh, racing contest, if you will, where we watch all of these uh, three year old races heading into the Derby. And I had Mage that day. So uh, Mage just made this, uh, uh, as Trevor Dedman would say, the scintillating move uh, in the Florida Derby and uh, looked like he had it won until Forte. Also shot up there and got him uh, right at the end. Um, may, uh, Jason mentioned the the curse of Apollo earlier, and that would apply to Mage uh, in terms of his chances to win. Um, so uh, I think this horse is a contender, um, and I would go with Jason's wagering, stra wagering strategy and across the board. I don't know that he wins because of the Apollo curse, but. Um, could see him as a legit candidate to hit the board. Was he tiring? Or was he... No, he just kind of, he kind of, that's a great question. Did he tire or was Forte just better? And the, the fractions indicated that, you know, they were there. I believe there was some controversy on what the actual fractions were in the Florida Derby at the end. And I don't know if he flattened uh, or not. That's a great question. Uh, or Forte was just better. Um, but he, he has tactical speed uh, for sure, which is a huge asset in the Derby to stay out of traffic. So you're saying if Forte gets blocked in, he's, he's probably the winner. It very possible. He's a spe especially if they if they go fast up front, this horse likes to sit back to some degree, and um, 
you know, he, he if he times his move, um, he's got a great jockey. Jason alluded to Castellano on boards. So, um, I'll yes. Give you, I'll give you two other things on Mage. One positive, one negative. Positively, if you, you look at his speed figures up there and you see his the very first race um, back in January, his speed figures 101, using these set of speed figures, he's – his first race speed figure is the best, meaning he was fast, fast out of the box. He, he, he didn't progress this way. I mean, he's been fast all along, which tells me he's his ceiling might be a little higher than some of these. One big drawback, which is going to put him in a, probably a traffic disadvantage, is he's terrible out of the gate. I mean, he's hit the gate. He's been, been bumped. Um, so... Who knows what will happen with the gates over? So well, his speed figures declined as the race went on, right? He went from 105 to. Yeah, I mean, they're within first and last or within two points. So, yeah. It, it, anyway, the the next one is Skinner, um, about halfway through the field. So I think we're, we're doing pretty good on time. Skinner is the. Uh, uh, he is from John Sheriff's as the trainer. You may remember Giacomo. Uh, this horse is getting a lot of comparisons to Giacomo. Um, you remember he lit up the tote board 12, 13 years ago. In that, he raced in California. He kept kind of coming in second, third, third, second. Never really had the big win. And then all of a sudden, when a few things went his way in the derby, <laughs> he was right there. Um, he's got a Really good late pace figures. If you look at this um, sheet, and I can email this to you, anybody, but you see the um, the LP figure right right below your cursor there. Anything above 100 is considered good. He's consistently running basically 100 or better late pace figures. Um, he hasn't really closed the door to, to win a big one yet, um, but some people feel that he's got it in him. And, um, <laughs> With a pretty decent pedigree, he's had a Curlin, uh, which is a you know a former Breeders' Cup Classic winner, and placed. Uh, I think he won the Preakness, didn't he? Um, anyway, good, good, uh, good pedigree uh, and good trainer, bringing in one that may be under the radar. I think this is one if you're into the gimmicks, trifectas and superfectas, definitely want to include him on the bottom. Uh, Skinner is one of my top two winning candidates. I, I love that the, the uh, Giacomo comparison that was good. I'm, I'm a fan. I think Juan Hernandez is one of the top West Coast jockeys. So good, good jock on board. Uh, John Sheriffs thinks this horse can run all day, that so the distance should be a problem. Um, and on the the rags and thoroughbred speed figures, um, it, it, his speed figure from those services definitely make him a win candidate so um the downside is just will he hit some track of trouble that's always a possibility but he's an absolute one candidate for my book. all right uh number 10 is practical move um this is the horse that i actually bet on in the future wagers back in february and march um i really like this horse he's proven to be um, um kind of the the west coast best he is uh, he's won three straight graded uh, stakes. Uh, he won the Santa Anita Derby. The knock on him is his pedigree. Uh, practical joke is is not proven yet to be a classic sire, although his father uh, into mischief has. So um, he's out of a fleet Alex uh, mayor and who won Preakness and Belmont. So he may have enough pedigree uh, to prove the naysayers wrong. What I see in this horse. It's a horse that has a pretty big pace advantage over a lot of the <laughs> He's proven that he can run fast early and late. Um, he's got good late pace figures. He's also got good early and mid-range figures. I think about the only knock uh, against this horse is his pedigree, um, his throw graph, which is another speed rating I use. It went down last race, and so that's feeding into maybe he's slowing down as the races get longer. I just think this horse, kind of with verifying, you're going to hear his name prominent throughout the race. I think it's a very good possibility that he could be in the lead when they turn for home. After that, we'll see how good he is. Um, he will be prominent in all of my tickets. 
Yeah. So um, I, I put a lot of weight onto the, the big negative Jason just described, which is I, I don't think this horse wants to go a mile and a quarter. But I, I've always viewed Practical Joke, his daddy, as a horse who was best in a mile to a mile 16th mile and eighth range. Um, his speed figures and plateaued since the end of last year, which again hints toward that uh, suggestion that maybe he doesn't want to run uh, much past a mile, mile 16th, mile and eighth. So um, I think Jason nailed it. I could see him be right there in the top of the stretch. My prediction is that he, he fades um, when they get to the quarter point. <laughs> but good luck in your future bets. <laughs> Disarm is number 11. Steve Asmussen, very well known trainer. He's had a, he, I think he's the all time leading uh, trainer in the United States in terms of wins, but he has never won the Derby. Um, he's coming in with a very stoutly bred Colt gun runner out of Cabot as the bloodlines. They've been reaching, I think, to get this horse into the Derby. Um, he, he ran a decent second to King's Barn coming from behind in the Louisiana Derby. He did not have enough points to get in, so they ran him three weeks ago in the Lexington Stakes, which is, you know, only a grade three, kind of the last ditch effort to get in. And he was only third uh, in that race, which got him enough points to get in. But, I mean, he lost that race by four and a half lengths. Uh, There's a lot of people at the track, around the track, talking about him. He's a good-looking horse. He's training well. I'm not buying it. I don't see him anywhere uh, in the top, even in the top 10. Great. I was crushed. One of my two picks last year was Epicenter, and I really wanted to see Asmus and finally win one. And he, he didn't, and he's not going to win one this year. Uh, number 12 is Jason's Road. About the only positive thing I can say about him, I have many nicknames that Jason's one of them. Um, <laughs> If it rains, he'll he'll finish last because in two races he's run in the rain, he's lost by a combined 48 lengths. Uh, so I, I mean, it might even scratch him during the rain. He's that bad. Wow. I think he's I think he's in here actually to be a rabbit and try to he's is gonna be forwardly placed. And a rabbit, I mean Cox Cox's big horse is Angel of Empire, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. I think this horse is gonna go towards the front and try to keep that pace lively to help um, Angel of Empire come from behind. Boy, I, I love a good conspiracy theory, and I I can't drink it up of that Kool-Aid. One thousand percent on that Jason's Road in hat on. He will be in, in or on or near the lead early on uh, to juice up that pace for uh, Angel of Empire. Uh, so I concur. Sun Thunder. Uh, this is another long shot. Um, Kenny McPhee, local connection, uh, Brian Hernandez, another local jockey. They certainly know Churchill, uh, but they, they don't, they're not on the right horse. I think they're putting blinkers on. Um, you know, you don't like to see equipment changes going into a big race. Uh, so I don't like that. I, I don't like that he's lost his last two races by over 14 lengths. Um, he's just, to me, he's a plotter. Uh, he, he may pass a few tired horses late and finish 12. Well, yeah, if you just look um, on the the right of the of his line, and it's like a who's who of derby entrance. He had <laughs> Tappet Rice, Verifying, uh, King, King, King's Ransom, whoever that is, uh, Disarm, Jason's Road, Angel of Empire, Two Phil. I mean, it's just, it's a who's who of who, who's taking turns to beat. Uh, he's like the jobber and the old professional wrestling to Jerry Waller or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this, this is the speedy tall trees of Churchill Downs uh, this Saturday. Won't be on my ticket. All right. Number 14, I think, is the third choice. That's Angel of Empire. This is Brad Cox, um, number one. Super impressive uh, Arkansas Derby winner. Uh, he was laying back. Uh, behind three or four links early, shot to the lead, and um, improved his position. So he ended up winning going away by over four links. Um, and he he did beat a crazy long shot that somehow he bet on in that race. Um, but that's another story for another day. Um, 
Flavie and Pratt rode King's Barnes to victory in the Louisiana Derby, and Pratt, which is probably one of the three or four best jockeys in the country, chose Angel of Empire. I think that's a key angle there. Um, there's a lot to like about this horse. He, he will be in a lot of my tickets. Uh, in five dirt starts, he's got four wins and a runner-up. He's got a good name, right. too. So I, I'm, I have a huge Derby man crush on Flavian or Flavian is on on front, and um, he he is an exceptional jockey, particularly on, in the Derby. I think in four of his last five, he's he has a couple of seconds, a third, and a fifth, maybe something like that. He all he is he's the most patient rider on the circuit, and just can wait and wait, versatile. And when you're talking about a race that's a, a circus with 20, 20 animals in there, um, I, I, Pratt's exceptional. So on top of that, as Jason alluded to, he's on a good horse. Angel of Empire is a legit win contender. He's my third or fourth choice only because I, I question the horses that he's beaten. Um, but, you know, at, at eight to one um, and the other pluses and Brad Cox training, um, He's a legit one contender. Yeah, I think if you're doing simple exact boxes and trap boxes, you include this horse for sure. Uh, number 15 is the favorite. This is the champ, as they say. He's a juvenile, Breeders' Cup juvenile winner. He's the Eclipse winner. He's the best two-year-old in the country. Forte oozes class, as they say, in the, in the horse racing uh, world. He has four grade one wins. Four. The rest of the field has four combined. Okay, so think about that for a minute. He is relentless in the stretch. I think he's a very deserving favorite. Uh, you know, he's got Pletcher, he's got Irad Ortiz on him. What's not to like? The only thing I would say is there, I don't I don't agree with this necessarily because he only had two starts this year. Some people say he's already peaked. Um, his thoroughbred figure did go down last race. But, I mean, all of his other speed figures and – and everything you can say about this horse are at the top of the charts. Um, I think he is going to have a lot to say about this race. There are other candidates to to win that offer more value, but I think he's he's the most likely horse on paper to finish in the top three. So you have to include him in every bet that you make. Jason kind of stole my thunder with that last comment. Like if you were a cliff jumper, so to speak, like this, this is a horse, just put a show bet on this one. And that's probably the, maybe the, the most sensible wager you do all day. I, I will be stunned if it takes, not in the top five. The question is, you know, how high the top five will he be? He, he I watched, I watched a lot of his races. I was a big fan of a horse called Loggins, who ran at Keeneland in the fall, and um, they had an incredible stretch duel that I was just waiting for Loggins to win. And Forte was just like he's classy, but he has this Rocky Balboa fight. Um, he is a gritty, tough fighting horse. I, having said that, I do share that concern Jason mentioned about if he's peaked already. Um, I I tend to think he has, but a lot of people would come back and say, well, Andrew, Todd Pletcher's training this horse. He knows how to win derbies. Um, they have a point system to get into the derby. So, you know, it, it's, it's certainly arguable to say for the Florida Derby, for example, the horse wasn't, quote, cranked up because if he got second or third, he was still going to be in the derby. And it's more of a keep your eye on the prize training pattern by pleasure. So that's the counter off argument to my perception. Um, I think this horse again hits the board. I, I just don't see him winning, but he, he could easily prove me. So a, a red Ortiz riding? Dirty Irad Ortiz is riding. So like you could get your heart broken if he crosses the line, but Irad, you know, cut off four horses and, and, and beat, beat a fifth jockey to, to get there. So you're, you're, the, you're the only person who's ever put a negative to it. That I've heard, and I'm okay. But my question: If he's not, if he's not peaked, is he? Is he a celebratory for the 50th anniversary of Secretary? Is he? Is he in that same league if he's not peaked? Nobody's in the same league. As okay, but I didn't say but be in that league. But... No, 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 no. And and all of the speed figure measurements that we looked at, uh, that I look at, 
buyer speed figures, brisnet and thoroughbred. This year's crop of horses is not even as fast as the last two or three years. The, the last couple so, of years, there's so been a great so, lot of what, what, How's he bred? He's a uh, violence, violence yeah. um, out of a blame. Out of, out of a blame. You know, blame. So he gets blame, but violence has got two. Yeah, with two horses in the Derby. Yeah, violence is unproven, as they would say, for the Derby. Um, but his his crops are pretty, they're on fire right now, the last couple of crops. Um, and violence is by Medallia de Oro, who's a, who's a, who's a you know, pretty well known sire. So I don't, I don't have a problem with his pedigree. Uh, number 16, um, two things about this horse. I love raising canes. <laughs> okay. I can eat raising canes two or three times a week, which is one of the reasons I bet on him in the Gotham at 23 to 1 and uh, was rewarded handsomely for that. Um, he had a, he had an eye catching come from behind victory in the Gotham that was on the slop. It was only at a mile. And he, his odds in 50 to 1. He's probably where he needs to be. Um, he doesn't have uh, on paper and any of the measurements uh, enough to be considered for any of the top placings. That said, I might put twenty dollars to show on him just for you know blanks and giggles, just because you know sentimental. But other than that, no, he's kind of a pretty hard pass. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, if you want to. Include him at the bottom of your super vector ticket. I won't, you know, at 50. He, he, this this horse might go off as, as the longest shot. Um, so, I mean, at some point there's value there, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, there's, if it rains, which I don't think it is, but if it rains, we we'll remember it a little bit, I guess. Uh, the next horse, number 17, Derma Sotagake. A lot of steam around this horse. Uh, a lot of folks really like this. A lot of respected handicappers that I read and listen to on satellite radio love this horse. Um, I am not in love with him uh, for a couple of reasons. He had a massive win in the UAE Derby in, in Dubai. Um, tour de force performance, as they'd say, where he established a good lead and then just blew him away in the stretch. The counter argument to that is if you go back and watch the race, the first, second, and third place finishers of that race were first, second, and third the entire race. It was a merry-go-round, as they say. So that track was certainly a speed-favoring track that night. He certainly benefited from that. The other kicker is, is that no horse from the UAE Derby has ever even hit the board, never even finished first, second, or third. So it's kind of one of those things where – until somebody does it, you know, I like Crown Pride last year, and I used to use a good horse, uh, but he got the Derby, and he he, freaked, he was one of the reasons the pace was so fast. He and the he and the uh, other horse, both horses, summer is tomorrow, I think is that the name. They just, I think they just completely overreact, the crowd, the noise, and they just went crazy, and they was crazy fast. He's a he's a confirmed front runner, and so he's. I think he's going to go a lot faster than he's than he wants to go. He his fractions in the UA Derby were actually not very fast in the first quarter, of the first half. So he's almost a toss for me. If I play him, it'll be defensive, uh, as you as you might say. Uh, maybe throw him in a box, um, but he, I'm not going to play this horse in an exacta or uh, across the board or anything. Well, I'm going to be having sake infused mint juice on Saturday. Whoa! Whoa! Gus, uh, this, this mm. horse, if you look, so for when a, a thoroughbred debuts as a two year old, they'll run five, six, or seven on a high end, um, you know, for their debuts typically. If you look at this horse's run line back to June of 22, debuts at, at a mile and the eighth eighth on the turf does that twice then cuts back to a mile and 16 first time on on a dirt service or a, or a poly and then from there every single race is is a mile plus and th th so this horse the distance won't be a problem it also draws on the outside 
at 17, which uh, 17 actually has never had a Derby winner. So there's a double whammy between the UA, UAE curse and the 17 hole. So I think it's the only post that's so never had. So two negatives is a positive. We all learned that in science, right? <laughs> so, uh, so, but th this horse <laughs> is going to be near the lead. I don't think he will be in the lead, um, but he'll be third or fourth in, in an outside position where he can tuck in and um, he ran a monster thoroughbred figure. Um, and the Japanese horses um, the last two years, including this year, have, have been on fire. Um, and I think this is um, this this is my top pick along the skin. How do you say that name again? Derma Soda Gake. That's Andrew's top pick. Um, not yeah. All right, uh, we're, I'll, I'll hit these last three real quick because they're, they're all long shots. You got Rocket Can, number 18, Lord Miles, 19, and Continuar, which is the second Japanese horse, number 20. Um, all long shots. Um, there's not much you can say about any of these other than uh, to quote uh, Rocket Man. Uh, I prefer others. <laughs> Rocket Can is trained by Bill Mott, which is a trainer, Hall of Famer. Um, some people like his training. Uh, to me, he's just kind of an also uh, mid pack horse. The other Japanese horse, number 20, Continue R, he is uh, he's training awful. So I think they're just here for the party. Um, I think Continue R, they're here for the Saki. I think Continue R and Jason's Road will probably fight it out to see who finishes last. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a great assessment. My my only mild pushback is maybe uh, Lord Miles for a price to, to close out your superfecta ticket. I'll I'll put Lord Miles at the bottom of my superfecta at a price. Paco Lopez is a decent jockey to uh, sort of pick up the pieces. I think the only way I would use Lord Miles is with, with the all button. <laughs> uh, I, I would be remiss if we didn't mention the also eligibles because uh, yeah. last year, right? last year, everybody remembers Rich Strike was not in the Derby, wasn't even in the Derby until Friday morning when there was a late scratch. So um, <laughs> these are in particular; these are the order. So if there is a scratch, the first horse then would be Cyclone Mischief. That's Dale Roman's horse, and Dale Roman's loves his horse. Because Dale Roman's always loves his horse. Um, <laughs> he does have Rosario listed, but that's um, that's second secondary. So if he gets in, he, he will likely have another horse because I think Rosario's riding with his arm. Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, the second horse, though, I would pay attention to this one. If this, uh, <laughs> this is the third Japanese horse, Mandarin Hero. He, he's proven now. He, he's come from overseas and he ran in the Santa Anita Derby and he almost won it. Um, he was right there with Skinner and Practical Mood. It was a blanket finish. Um, if this horse gets in, you might want to include him. A absolutely. I, I would, if this horse gets in, I'm I'm doing a big exacto with Derma Surakafe and Mandarin Hero. Mandarin Hero, if, if that one or two more gallops, he gets Practical Move and Still look like he had gas in the tank. Um, I, I really wish Mandarin Hero was running this race. Maybe he gets in, um, but we'll, we'll see. If not, I'll stay tuned for the race. Yeah. These are all my notes, pros and cons each horse. If anybody wants this, um, you can email me, jason.morgan, pretty simple, and SYB for soccer Mass. Jason dot Morgan at FYB. Did you all the way to the end, Julie? Do you want us just to send it out through P mail? You can. Um, yeah. Here, here are my picks. And Andrew, if he wants to to give you a top four, top five, so this, call this my super high five. I think Tappet Trice is the most talented horse in the field. He's got to have the work to do. Practical move, I think, is probably in Forte the next two best. I got Mage and Angel in the Those are the five that I will, you know, box in exactus, box in trifectas, um, probably bet Mage uh, across the board, um, practice.
tactical move, I will probably do one of my pet bets is an exacto with all. Um, so if you really like a horse and you you're you're trying to to get a decent price, you know, if you say I like practical move and I, I bet him a dollar exacto wheel with all, and then flip it around and do all over him, that means I'm guaranteeing myself the exacto if he runs first or second. And we've seen last year. I don't I think it was about two thousand dollars, the two dollar, the two dollar exacto. No, the one dollar exacto. The one dollar exacto last year with Epicenter, the favorite, in second, but the crazy long shot winning. It was a two thousand dollar exacto. Mm -hmm. So that's a defensive way to to bet a horse that you like, say in an exacto. And if you use the all button and something crazy happens, then you might get it. So um I think the oaks is going to be a little chalky, wet paint, and botanical. I think are the top two choices. I, I just I like really like both of those horses. You'll get some value with botanical, and you'll get more value with pretty mischievous. Uh, the only drawback there is she got the fourteen outside. But anyway, those are both picks. You got anything to wrap up? Uh, I'll just say I really like. Uh, I, we're identical, I think, on three, four, and five for the Derby. My top two in one one A. I like Dermaso, Agafe, and uh, and Skinner. It's sort of my one one A. I don't I don't know if I just want to head the other where I'm sitting. Forte Mage and Angel Empire. I, I, I love I love those to round up top five. Well Thank done. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, a couple of questions. Today. Does anybody move up or down if it's a wet track? In your opinion, or would that yes. alter your bets? Yes, confidence game moves way up um, as to a contender status. Race game moves up to maybe someone who could complete a super high five. I don't think it, I don't, I haven't looked at the latest, but I don't think it's going to rain. Any other questions? Yeah. Then, uh, then if you want to get in to the, the derby contest again, you're just picking three horses. And if those horses finish first, second, or third, you're gonna get what the, what it pays. That like like you bet two dollars a price. Give it to Mark. Thank you all. All right. All right, everybody. I know Jason's gonna be willing to take up for questions. We let's call the call the uh, the the ticket here, and then make sure if somebody gets paid, maybe at least a pizza. All right. So uh, four, two, one, one. Last four. Four, two, one, one. Yeah, yeah. All right. Blaine, would you be willing to take one? I don't know if you can introduce one. While he's spinning, guys, it will be a Thank you. 
Dude, the whole office keep this up. I know it. I'm not saying. 